And you may notice we've, we've got a banjo up here, so we can't waste a banjo. We gotta do some bluegrass also. We come to praise Almighty. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship, and please take note to the uh, announcements at the back of the print at the back of the bulletin. I want to mention especially about um, this is back to school time, and Lutheran Social Services is uh, asking for these school supplies: notebooks, pens, pencils, washable markers, crayons, erasers, glue sticks, colored pencils or anything you think that would be good for a student going back to school. So just bring those to church, and Lutheran Social Service will be collecting that and then uh, giving those out to, to the kids. Also, a uh, special welcome to anyone worshiping with us for the first time. We invite you to pick up one of the colorful bags on the table, the entry, that has homemade cookies as well as information about Christ's servant we hope will be helpful to you. And we continue in our worship. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Rejoice. Glory to God in the highest. 
Pastor Diane. See you guys. Good morning. So I'm. Um, I know we've been doing this at our house, but I was wondering, have you been watching any of the Olympics? Have you seen some of that? Yeah. So does some pretty amazing things, right? So what 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 sports have you seen? Maybe what have you seen? Swimming. All right. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. So football, as in the the uh, the world's name of soccer. Yes, and uh, others, yeah? Volleyball. Volleyball, that's been cool, yeah. Gymnastics, yeah. What did you see? Biking, cycling, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna keep going so you guys can get to Sunday school. Um, so there's been lots of different things and there's um, lots of races, right? Runners, runners is a big portion of what, what happens at the Olympics, they're running races. And the Bible talks about um, life is kind of like running a race, only it's not, we're not talking about just, just this. We're talking about, as Christians, it's, it's about following Jesus, um, sharing God's love, um, showing forgiveness, helping others. And that's how, how we're in a race, so to speak. That's how, how we are following Jesus, and that the finish line that Jesus brings us is heaven. Jesus brings us to heaven. All right, well, I know you've got some good Sunday school things, and you'll go all together today, go over to the main, to the fellowship hall, all right, where the kitchen is. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your great love. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you for giving us Jesus. To show us the way. To show us the way. To live in love. To live in love. And forgiveness. And forgiveness. And caring for others. We pray through Jesus, our friend, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. I held on to these. I should have passed these out down the aisle, but you want to get a sticker before you go? All right. unpopular message of God's judgment, he suffers rejection. Today's reading distinguishes between the true prophet, like Jeremiah, who speaks God's word, and the false prophet who misleads the people through dreams. One is like wheat, the other like worthless straw. Our first reading is from Jeremiah 23, verses 23 through 29. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams, that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? We will read responsibly Psalm 82. God stands to charge the divine council assembled, giving judgment in the midst of the gods. Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. Now 
I say to you, you are gods and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. The author of Hebrews presents us with rich stories of faith. In a long list of biblical heroes, we find examples of trust in God that enabled them to face the trials of life faithfully. In addition to this cloud of witnesses, we have Jesus, the perfect model of faithful endurance. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 29. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, established the edge of the sword, escaped it also, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, torment, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Please stand. potentially divisive effects of obedience to God's call, the way of the cross often leads followers to encounter hostility and rejection, even from those they love. We read from Luke chapter 12, beginning verse 49. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, 
but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I was uh, reading through the, the scripture for this weekend, I found that uh, there's a, a lot there, uh, kind of intriguing, but what really jumped out at me right away was the ending of the Hebrews reading, where it talks about the great cloud of witnesses, and it talks about perseverance. And when we were on our Mexico mission trip two weekends ago, uh, our third day was actually Monday, so we were building a house on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday is our final day. And each day as we begin our work, we have a devotion. And so our devotion for when, uh, Monday, our, our final day, uh, the, the theme was perseverance, and the scripture was Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. And we talked about, uh, you know, how to, how to lift each other up, because after two days of hard work, you know, and, and more hard work facing you on that third day. Uh, how can we encourage each other? How could we help each other uh, get to be able to finish the house? And uh, thankfully, uh, we were able to, and we had a team of nine, including myself, plus partnered with seven other people. And so we got to work and, and every came, came together and we finished the house. So God was really with us and God helped us have that, that perseverance to get it done. There will be a chance to, we'll have a movie and sharing a lot more detail about the Mexico mission trip on the weekend of September 24th and 25th. So really, really looking forward to that. The other part of this, uh, this reading that also, I think the reason along with the Mexico mission trip that it jumped out at me is because the image that is, is being used there where it says on verse one, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Now, um, this, this imagery is very much like uh, what the Olympics are and what's been going on, and especially, uh, I think it hasn't happened yet, I can't say I'm up on every sport, but when the marathon happens, and they've been running through all through the streets, 26 point plus miles. Uh, and to, at the very end, they come into the stadium. And you have to know that even though these are elite and well-trained people, that their muscles have to be hurting and they have to be <laughs> breathing hard. But when, can you imagine when they enter that stadium and all those people start to cheer, how that has to lift them and give them that extra extra strength to, to be able to finish the race and, and be strong at the end. And so that, that's, that's the imagery that is, is put before us. Well, I don't know uh, what you've been watching on the Olympics. I know Pastor Dave has been trying to multitask his Olympics with TV, tablet, phone, whatever else he can uh, kind of watch all at the same time. So when you think about the Olympians, one of the things is, that, you know, they did not get there on their own. You know, to be in the Olympics, you don't say, hmm, I think I'll choose this sport, I'll go out by myself, I'll practice, I'll think what I should eat, and then I'll buy my ticket to get to Rio. <laughs> no, it takes a whole bunch of people together with that individual or that team. You know, they've got, coaches, they have role models, they, they have other athletes that they've looked up to, and they have supporters, people who help them you know, buy that plane ticket or help them get there. And so many more people have been there behind them, getting them to that finish line, so to speak, or whichever competition that, that they're in. And that's what the, also what the writer in Hebrews is saying. It says there's been many, many others before you who have helped, who, who have been supporting you, have been preparing the way for you and encouraging you. And the reading goes back further than we, we had. It goes, he says there's all the way from Abel, all the way from Abel 
through the prophets. Here are people of faith who show you a way of life, of following God and living in faith. And so we were given, there are many examples that are given, and then ours picks up with the Exodus, and of course, making it through uh, the sea together, and then there's the Jericho kind of reference. And then um, another example of faith, though, which is very, very different, Rahab the prostitute. Now, through all of the previous things, everything mentioned is more specifically someone who was an Israelite or part of the Jewish people. And then all of a sudden we have Rahab the prostitute who was an outsider. She was not born Jewish. She was part of the land of Canaan. And before the Jews entered the promised land, they sent out a contingent to explore spies who went ahead to check out what's it like. And those spies were protected by Rahab in her city. She, she hid them. So they were kept safe. So then when the Israelites came back and took over and, and got the promised land, Rahab and her family were safe. So she had, she had trusted in God. She had believed that this God was the true God, and she trusted, and she and her family were safe. So God works in all kinds of people, and maybe in ways that are a little bit surprising. Well, then there are more, more biblical uh, people of the Bible stories that are named, and then it goes into kind of a more broad, a little generalized, about people who lived in faith. Through faith, they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received their dead by resurrection. And so this, this just kind of refers in a general way to, to various stories from the Bible, but it's also saying how when, when God works in us, when we rely on God, when we have faith in God, some amazing things can happen. What, what God can do when we just trust in God, God can do more than we can think or ask or imagine when we let, let God lead us and guide us. Well, then, then the list uh, continues. Others were tortured refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. I like the first list a whole lot better. <laughs> That's not the list I want to identify with, but it's important. It's important because it is also saying because a person has faith, they will stand up for what is right. And in standing up for what is right and God's way, the world may not agree, and so there will be difficulty, there will be challenges, but will you hold on to God no matter what? And so that's another example of keeping faith and, and holding on to God. Well, there are um, many, many people, and who have gone before us, and this, this is that reminder, how many have come before us and have given us the witness of faith that can encourage us and, and give us support and guidance in our living of our faith, too. Sometimes we need role models, right? Role models can, can help us. And uh, for the Olympics, uh, one of the things that I saw was Katie Ledecky, I don't know if anybody watched some of the swimming races, and so I, I did get to see when she did the 800 meter, 
and she finished the race, and she's like, anybody else coming? You know, is anybody else there? I mean, she just was so far ahead of anyone else. It was just, just amazing. And so, you know, they were talking to her about, you know, how did she reach this? How did she, you know, get to be the, maybe perhaps the best swimmer ever? And, and she talked about, you know, role model was important and her coach and her training and how they actually took um, films of Michael Phelps, <laughs> a very, another excellent, excellent swimmer and, and studied his form. And so she, she learned as a role model to, to emulate his style, his, his stroke in, in that. And that's also, you know, where she gave credit that, that she was able to be such a strong swimmer to look at others as a role model. And so this is stories of others who may be role models, but I also was thinking about, well, in my own life, who do I see as a role model of faith? And for me, one of the standouts would be Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he was a Lutheran pastor. He was born in Germany, grew up in Germany before World War II and he was trained as a pastor and as a theologian. And before the war, he had come to America. He was, a, he was very respected as a theologian, and he was teaching at seminary in America. And, um, but there was something brewing, and everybody knew it. And so his friends, the other professors, were encouraging him and saying, stay here, stay here, you'll be safe. But he told them, he said, how could I go and be rebuilding my country after its defeat if I haven't been there, if I haven't gone through everything with, with everyone. And so he did return to Germany, and he helped establish an underground seminary because he was part of what was known as the Confessing Church, and they opposed the Nazis. They were against the Nazis. And so they had to go underground. But he still uh, could travel to church conferences for a while outside of Germany. And so he would take information. He was, um, you could say a spy. He was, he was taking information so that it could be passed back to the English. And he also even participated with those who plotted to assassinate Hitler. But most of all, he wanted to be there because he, he cared for his people. And he wanted, he worked for the defeat of his own country. And he lived through it. He hoped to be there to help rebuild his country in the right way. But he was captured, and he was imprisoned, and he was ultimately executed. But as it is told that when he was, just before he was executed, he said, this is not the end, it is the beginning. He's quite an example of faith to me. Now, there are many others that are maybe closer, uh, people who don't have books written about them, uh, people who aren't known by many in history. But these people are just as important, and these in some ways maybe more important. These are the people that you know in your everyday life. And one of those kind of people that I also have so many, but one that I, I remember and, and think of is a woman from our church when we were in Texas. And she, she had, uh, had to have her hip replaced, have a hip replacement. And unfortunately, uh, after a while, there was an infection in the, in the joint where they placed the pin, and that uh, pin had to come out. And they had to give her a whole bunch of medicine. It took a good long while, but they felt like they had cleared the infection finally. And so they, they scheduled a second surgery. So they took her back and they replaced the pin and you know she was recovering. And then there was infection again and they had to take the pin out. Well, can you imagine not having anything connecting your, your leg to the rest of you? She, she could stand a bit for a little bit on one leg, but this leg, she couldn't control at all. And so she had to use a wheelchair. And if she wanted to move her leg, she had to literally, you know, with her hands, try to lift and move it. 
Eventually, uh, as time passed, she, she had to live in a care facility, in a nursing home. But every time I went to visit her, now, she was a real southern lady, so she always, her hair was always just right, her makeup, beautiful. And any time I'd come in, she'd just smile, and she was so happy to see me. And then if an, if an aide or a nurse came in, or one of the assistants that was there, she would say, this is my pastor, and I love my church, and do you go to church? Do you have a church? Well, you should, you should go visit my church. This is, and, and she just shared God's love. And she, she expressed, you know, how grateful she was. Now, she could have very understandably had a great sense of pity and, and sorrow and feeling sorry for herself. But she didn't. She was always sharing God's love and saying, hey, would you like to come to my church? Well, Jesus... Uh, talks about facing choices, and that's that's a little bit too what Hebrews talks about about when we when we hold on to our faith, not everyone's going to agree with that. And what will we do? Will we hold fast, or will we give up? Will we give in? And Jesus talks about standing strong in the faith. Now, Jesus is not saying go pick a fight, right? He's not, he's not saying that. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, forgive as you have been forgiven. So Jesus didn't want us to go cause division, but there would be times, and he knew it, when accepting Christ as the Savior would mean that there would be families that wouldn't always agree, that would not sit well sometimes and one would have to choose and would you stay with Jesus would you keep following Jesus and that's what matters most and that's what you should do and so he was preparing his followers about that that that, that would happen now most of us I think are very blessed and I include myself in that I include my family in that cloud of witnesses. They are also people who lived a life of faith and gave that witness and support to me and really encouraged me in following Jesus. And so I, I never had to face any struggle like that. But even today sometimes people will still face that choice. And the thing is, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. God is first. God has to be the first priority in all of our decisions. Now, the thing Jesus also talks about, he uses the word facing baptism. And it's, it's, a, it's a way of talking about going to the cross. That his baptism, Jesus' baptism, means the cross. And that he is going to do so. He's, he's, he's preparing that. He knows that that's coming. And Jesus did go to the cross, and he died for each and every person. Those who were ready and already following him, those who were rejecting him but could yet still come to believe. Jesus went to the cross for each and every single person so that we could cross finish line with Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen.
Passionate rule and enduring love. Let us lift up the needs of the church, the world, and all of creation. Almighty Father, send the fire of your word to cleanse and refine your church and shine the light of the gospel to all the ends of the earth. Lord, we give you praise, for you always hear us. Compassionate God, bring your cooling and refreshing breath into the world's parched places. Protect the very young and the old, the earth's fragile habitats, and all that is vulnerable to the heat. Lord, we give you praise, for you always hear us. Merciful God, keep safe all those in paths of destructive wind or water. Especially we pray for those facing floods in the south. Heal those afflicted by poor living conditions. Be near to all who are suffering, especially, we pray, for Annalise, Aidan, Jane, Elizabeth, Frank, Jacob, Butch, Ray, Chuck, Terry, Terry, Lou, Nancy, Alicia, Melissa, Dale, Curve, Patrick, Shirley, William, Mike, Josephine, Alfonso, Kathy, Ryan, Cindy, Nick, Joyce, Kristen, Rudy, Marcel, John, Jerry, Harrison, Julia, Chris, Danielle, Don, Jeff, Mike, John, Xander, Donna, Robert, Francine, Katie, Alexandra, Jenny, Butch, Glenda, Steve, Simon, Lynn, Amy, Henry, Jason, Joe, the family and friends of Annette North, the family and friends of Adriana Soto, the family and friends of Dora Kemp. Surround them with your light and your love. Lord, we give you praise, for you always hear us. God of mercy, hear the cries of your people and answer us according to your steadfast love through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand up to walk around and share the peace of our Lord. Continue in our worship with our offering. You will pass me on. 
Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite our communion ministers to come forward, ask that we would have five communion ministers to assist us. Also, everyone is invited and welcome to share in these gifts of God's grace and forgiveness. So, communion ministers, come on up. <laughs> Well, Pastor Diane was talking about uh, Olympic athletes, and as I'm watching all these uh, marvelous sports, you see all these athletes that are at their absolute and very best, and we're not always at our best. Um, it seems there are a lot of times that we tend to be at our worst. And so one winter morning, very early in the dark, I started writing a song with Psalm 19 basically saying, even when we're not praising God, the heavens declare the glory of God. We don't even need words or language. Just by the existence of creation, God's glory is proclaimed. So we're going to proclaim God's glory right now. Woke up in the dark, rubbing slumber from my eyes. Start the day not knowing what's to come. Drag some fingers through my hair. I've got breakfast on my mind. Walking past the window, look out to the sky. The heavens declare the glory of 
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Serve the Lord. Yes, Share that peace with each other. Greet at least five people. Extra points for greeting any of those kids that are really excited about worshiping today. Yes. 